Okay, this is um, a video explaining to you uh, some of the necessary parts of your induction in relation to your level three vet nursing qualification. Um, I'm Rachel Cook, I'm your lecturer and I'm also your programme manager and head of centre uh, for Harriet Ellis and our veterinary nursing qualifications. I'm going to run you through this paperwork as it's a really important aspect um, that we have to complete very early on um, in order that we can get you registered with the RCVS as soon as possible um, and make sure that everything is in order from that point of view. Um, it's really important that we register you with the RCVS in order that you are enabled to do the things that you'll need to do as a student veterinary nurse. And the reason that um, this video is coming out to you prior to your full induction uh, days is so that you have sufficient time to get this paperwork completed, get the relevant um, practice staff members, which we'll have a look at later on in the documentation, to sign it for you. Um, and also so that I've got sign, uh, time to sign aspects that I would need to and also make sure that everything's in order as well. So that is the reason that it's coming out to you prior to your induction day in order that we can get this paperwork sorted in a timely fashion and then I can I can instigate it basically. What I then do is put this into um, documentation for the RCVS and send that on to them. So, as you can see, you can see the header there, RCVS Sitting Standards. We're actually going to have a look at the RCVS enrolment form itself, first of all, um, and this document, and you will receive a copy of this document uh, with this video, um, is what you're going to be completing. And there's some guidance notes here, so we're just going to quickly have a bit of a look through that guidance as well. So this is their most up-to-date uh, version of the documentation, which is 2020, so please make sure that you don't use anything other than what you're being sent out to make sure that it's as up to date as possible. You can find these forms on the RCVS website, but this is from there and it is the most up to date version. So information for yourselves um, as new vet nursing students. So these notes here provide you information about your enrolment uh, with the RCVS as a student veterinary nurse and you need to keep this information in a safe place. So you will be issued with an enrolment number. So once I've sent all of the documentation off and the RCVS have registered you as a student vet nurse, you will receive an enrolment number and that number will then carry uh, through with you in your career as a qualified vet nurse, um, but it's also essential at this point and you'll need to put that number into documentation uh, in relation to your training. So that is your unique student ID number and any correspondence in particular that you have with the RCVS, you will need to use that number. You've got a period of education and training, so you will need to complete a mandatory minimum of 2,990 hours of training. At least 1,800 hours must be spent in employment. And because you are apprentices, you are employed, and that is going to be uh, in a, either an approved training practice or an approved auxiliary training practice. You uh, will need to complete a record of training throughout your time um, on your qualification. And this is an official record of your completed training time that you will need to provide to the RCVS in order to be able to register as a qualified veteran nurse. You'll need to fill in personal details on that record of, tra of training as soon as you've received it and keep it in a safe place. And it should be regularly updated throughout your training. And you can begin counting hours from your date of enrolment. So that date of enrolment will be on your RCVS enrolment letter, which you will receive from there when you um, are basically informed that you're registered as a student veteran nurse, okay? So your hours can't start until that date for your time, for your period of, of education and training, okay? Um, and you should note that only your training practice principal and head of centre, so your training practice principal may be one of your practice principals and it's important you find out who that person is um, to make sure that you get the right person signing your form and then head of centre wise uh, with ourselves, that is myself and only we may verify and sign it. So as with all official documents, you must take care to maintain the record honestly and carefully. You should complete all entries in ink. If you make a mistake, you must put a line through the incorrect entry and replace it with the correct information. And then your training practice principal or myself as head of centre should initial and date the change to show they agree to the alteration. So generally, that would probably be your training practice principal that would do that because it's probably an error to do with your work hours. You shouldn't sign entries yourself. As I said, they must be signed by a head of centre or training practice principal for those parts that are applicable. So the RCS maintains a record of authorised signatures and they will be checked when you apply to register as a qualified veterinary nurse. So it's really important that you keep this record of training up to date at all times because signatures may be difficult to obtain once you've left to practice. And that list of authorised um, or records, sorry, of authorised signatures relates to your training practice principal. 
So that's why it's so important you make sure that it's that person that's signing it. Upon completion of your training, although obviously this is quite some time in advance, or it seems like it at the moment, but on completion of your training, you'll receive an email from the RCS registration department with a link to your online account area, and you'll be able to complete an application to be admitted to the admitted to the register of veterinary nurses. The application process is very straightforward. It involves you updating your details, uploading your record of training and paying your registration fee. OK, awarding organisation. Um, so in relation to yourself and the qualification that you are undertaking, your awarding organisation is Vet Skills. So this um, awarding organisation, it has been accredited to be able to award you a veterinary nursing licence to practice qualification and you complete a qualification that's been approved for that. OK, so it's responsible for developing and administering the qualification in the first place and uh, you're registered with them in accordance with notes and uh, codes of practice etc that uh, is laid down by the RCBS. So vet skill must ensure that they adhere to what RCBS is stipulating. Okay. So new qualifications which are not yet fully accredited by the Veterinary Nursing Council may be subject to external practical OSCE examination before the RCBS before you'll be able to register the, um, onto the um, RVN register, okay? So if you're undertaking such a qualification, your central university will be able to advise you about those requirements. MPL, it states here, in relation to yourselves, because you are completing a vet skill qualification, we won't be using the nursing progress log. That's um, not relevant to this qualification anymore. Instead, you will be using an e-portfolio. And the e-portfolio that we as a training provider use is um, an e-portfolio called OneFile. OK, so it's similar in relation to the nursing progress log in that it is a means of logging your practical experience that you are gaining in the workplace. It's just a, a different way of doing it. And I issue that information to you rather than that coming uh, directly from RCBS, as it states here in relation to the MPL. OK, so your centre. So we are your centre, Harriet Ellis Training and Recruitment. And we have a duty to ensure that all of our students are given the opportunity to carry out practical clinical training. We are responsible for ensuring that all students who require clinical placement are placed in approved training practice. And we um, either assist students with that or you come to us already being in that position. However, if you do come to us already in that position, you've gained that um, employment yourself, then we do have to take um, undertake necessary checks to make sure that the training practice is approved and it's appropriate for you to do your training there. OK, withdrawing from training or intermitting. So if you need to take a break from your studies for any reason, for example, say maternity leave or an extended period of sickness, you must inform your centre and keep in touch with your head of centre as directed by him or her. If you leave your centre, you must notify the RCS in writing of your decision. Once you have left your college, your student status ceases, you will have no legal dispensation to carry out delegated medical treatments or minor surgical procedures under Schedule 3 and must not carry out work of this nature. If you decide to recommence your training or transfer to a different college, your head of centre may apply to reactivate your enrolment. Extending enrolment. So if your completion of training is delayed, you may apply to the RCVS to extend your enrolment period. Usually those are for one year periods in relation to extension timeframes and the extension fee would be payable. Any change of details, you must personally inform the RCVS in writing immediately of any change of your name or address. And you may email the following email address to inform the RCVS of changes in your circumstances. So it's really important that you keep the RCVS informed of any change in contact details, as these, these contact details are what's going to be used to send you your registration documentation. So it needs to be up to date. And you must also inform the RCVS using the relevant paperwork if there are any changes regarding your training practice, if you leave your college or transfer to a different one, or if you transfer to another awarding organisation, or transfer from a higher education to a vocational programme. Registration as a vet nurse. So once you've obtained your registra registrable qualification, i.e. your vet skill level three diploma in companion animal, and have completed your mandatory period of education and training, and that excludes any annual leave or absence, you may apply to enter the RCS register of veterinary nurses. And uh, vet skill will inform the RCS once you've achieved your qualification, and then the RCS will contact you by, via email to provide the details of how to register, as stated earlier on. As she said, 
just make sure you keep the RCS up to date up to date with any changes in relation to personal contact details so there's no delay in getting in touch with you about this registration progress so working as a student veterinary nurse so while you are an RCS enrolled student veterinary nurse you may undertake the nursing care of animals under the supervision of a registered veterinary nurse or a veterinary surgeon you will also be taught how to administer medical treatments to animals and may also be shown how to carry out some minor surgical procedures so undertaking medical treatments and surgical procedures on animals is controlled by law and that piece of law is called the veterinary surgeons act 1966 so as an enrolled student you have what we term permitted uh, certain legal dispensations so that you can learn how you're going to be appropriately nursing animals um, as an rvn okay and that comes under that piece of legislation so you must therefore only undertake such treatments and procedures whilst you're working under qualified supervision so as stated you're qualified rvn or you're qualified veterinary surgeon um, in your approved training practice which you're going to be working in throughout the period of your training okay um, so you will be in, in the main point of view working under the direction of your veterinary surgeon but your um, registered veterinary nurses will be assisting the veterinary surgeon with that as well so you must not carry out delegated activities if you were seconding um, so completing a job as a locum or working any additional hours in your clinical pl placement if they're not part of your agreed arrangements okay what you may do so there's plenty of um, information on the rcvf website and in particular what you can undertake as a student vn is contained in the notes and schedule three of the veterinary surgeons act which can be found on the rcvs website and will also be provided to your college so ourselves um, and certainly we will be looking at that throughout your um training so it's most important you only undertake work that you've been adequately trained to do and feel competent and confident to perform. If you are asked to do something for which you have not been trained or do not yet feel confident, you must bring this to the attention of your supervising veterinary surgeon or RVM. And that is because our animal welfare is at the forefront of everything that we do. So we mustn't be doing something that we are not confident to do so and must bring that to somebody's attention if that is the case. So describing yourself. So you may describe yourself as a student veterinary nurse whilst you're working within your training practice. However, if you're carrying out locum work outside of your training practice, you wouldn't be able to describe yourself as a student because that's separate to, to your training. You must not, under any circumstances, undertake work under the provision of Schedule 3 whilst working outside your training practice. And as a student, you must not describe yourself as a veterinary nurse. The title veterinary nurse and the associated post-nominal letters that we use, so RVN, may only be used by individuals who have completed their training and achieved that RCS, RCVS certificate in veterinary nursing and have their name entered on the RCVS register of veterinary nurses. So joining a professional re representative body. So now that you're a student veterinary nurse, you may wish to consider joining um, an association in order to keep in touch with a new profession. So the BVNA is the main UK professional representative association for vet nurses and has a student membership category as well. They publish a monthly journal, which is free to members, hold a major veterinary nursing congress with many activities, especially for students every October. And they also have a full time staff who are able to offer advice on many employment and other veterinary nursing issues. And there's their contact details there. Any queries about any of the above, you can contact the RCS on the following address. So this is the main part that I need to talk through with you um, in order that we get this paperwork completed appropriately um, and get it returned to me in the correct manner and state, basically. So this form is your application to enrol as a student veterinary nurse. So we've read those guidance notes okay and what you're going to do is complete part one this is your application this is the part that you're completing you don't complete any other parts of this form i complete part two and four and your training practice principal will complete part three you must use black ink and you must write in block capitals so all of that is at the top of that form so please make sure that you're referring back to this now obviously you'll have been emailed um, a copy of this document so if you need to start again you can do um, so you are completing part one so once you've completed part one you can then pass the document on to your training practice get your tra get your training practice principal and as we said make sure that is the training practice principal that you've got completing this document um, 
get them to sign it and then you can gather that page back from them and then send those documents to me. So you aren't sending this form directly to the RCVS, you are sending it to myself as your head of centre. Now, the usual rule of thumb would be that you'd give this to me um, face to face. Um, it might be the case that due to COVID that we uh, aren't able to do that. So in that instance, you would need to email it to me. So you'll need to scan it on and email it to me and then I can complete my parts. Then I put it all together and send it to the RCVS. So you are going to complete part one only in block capitals using black ink. You're gonna put in your surname, all four names. You're gonna put in your title and you're gonna specify that there. You're going to put your gender and that must be the same as shown in your passport or ID documents. You're gonna clearly show your date of birth. You're then gonna complete your address and then your postcode. You're going to provide the most appropriate telephone number, which is your contact number. And you're going to provide, again, the most accurate and relevant email address for yourself. So for both of these, make sure they're up to date and make sure that if obviously any of these aspects change, so your address, your name, your telephone number, your email address, that you do as we've just said, and you update the RCVS regarding that. OK, you've got, then got to move on to this aspect here. And, and this aspect asked if you've been enrolled as a student veterinary nurse before or not. So it asks, is this the first time you have enrolled as a student veterinary nurse? Now, obviously, if it is, you put yes. If no, i.e. you have been registered with the RCVS before, you need to tick the no box and you need to enter your previous date of enrolment and your enrolment number below. OK, so you will have had that on your RCVS enrolment letter, which hopefully you've kept safe. If you haven't got that from your previous training provider, you will need to contact them or contact the RCVS. It's probably the best form in which to get that information to be able to complete this form. And you're going to put the date that you were enrolled as well. Here, this states I've enclosed certified copies, photocopies, sorry, of required identification documents. So in relation to that, we'll move on to have a look at that in a moment. But basically, it's either your driving license or your passport, which somebody is certified to say that that is who you know you are, who you say you are, basically. You're going to tick to say that you've done that. Candidate's application for enrolment as a student veterinary nurse. Again, you're going to put here your full name. And then this box here that reads, I hereby apply to be enrolled as a student veterinary nurse. As an enrolled student veterinary nurse, I understand I will be subject to the registration rules of the RCVS, which are applicable to veterinary nurse training. I agree to abide by the Code of Professional Conduct for Veterinary Nurses. This can be found on the RCVS website. And it, uh, in relation to that, including any updates as published by the RCVS, you're then going to sign and date it. You're also going to put what your demographic is. So make sure you tick the appropriate box there. And then, as you can see here, this is where I'm going to complete it. So I'm going to complete part two. I'm going to complete that box. I'm going to sign, etc. Part three is where your training practice principle is going to complete it. And part four is verification of your identity. So it is going to be uh, myself completing that. I'm going to put in your full name. I'm going to talk about the type of ID that you have provided. So as we said, that can be a passport, driving license, national ID card, birth certificate but with that with all subsequent change of name documents if relevant and a certified photograph but most people would have a passport and a driving license and it can be a provisional driving license if that's applicable to you so i certify that i've checked the original um, identification documentation and that that's a true likeness so at this point in time it will probably be a member of staff that will be completing that on my behalf and i'll be putting that here so what they're going to you are going to provide um, your form of identification, your original, you're going to get somebody to have a look at it and say, yes, that is you. I can see it's you and your name, etc. matches. You're then going to take a photocopy of it. It's going to be signed by that veterinary surgeon or uh, ideally a veterinary surgeon in your practice. Your training practice principal could do this on your behalf. They're doing the other part of the form and then they're going to put their details so their name, the date, their qualification, their registration number, and they're going to put that this is a true likeness of you as the applicant. Okay, 
So that's your RCS enrollment form. If you do have any questions about it when you are completing it that you wish to ask me, please do get in touch, okay? I prefer for you to ask a question, even if you think it's a daft question, and make sure that the form comes into me correctly. Then not ask the question and the form come into me and me need to, you know, to send it back to you to get you to complete further aspects. So if you make an error, print off another form, make sure everything is spot on as requested. OK, I'm just going to take that screen off a moment and I'm just going to show you your next document, which is your VetSkill student registration.